did you direct him to make he these made payments? the deal he made the deals and by the way he played to two counts that aren't a crime which nobody understands uh, I watched a number of shows sometimes you get some pretty good information by watching shows those two counts aren't even a crime they weren't campaign finance President Trump there, of course, on Fox News this morning, channeling his inner Matlock as he played lawyer for Fox and Friends. But is there any merit to his argument, nothing to see here, no crime? And for that uh, and more, let's bring in our panel. Richard Brodsky is an attorney, also former Democratic New York State Assemblyman from Westchester, also professor at NYU. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Conservative strategist Bill O'Reilly, Bill Communications Director for Mark Malinaro's gubernatorial bid in New York. And Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right, Richard, barrister, I ask you this. Um, to the letter and from a practical level, the president saying, hey, you know, money's fungible here. It wasn't campaign finance funds. And nothing, no laws were breaking and I, broken. And by the way, I don't even think, in his words, that Cohen, he pled guilty to something that wasn't even a crime. As it relates to campaign finance funds and obviously impacting an election, et cetera, where does it start and end as it relates to his exposure? He's wrong about what uh, thank Cohen. You. Cohen pleading to. That was a crime. And if he was a part of the conspiracy, he's subject to those kinds of charges. As to whether he committed a separate standalone crime, we don't have enough evidence to say so. And as much as I'm rooting for it, it's, it, it you asked me a question as a lawyer, it's to be seen. However, there's enough to say it's a high crime and misdemeanor. But, but so before we even get there, though, why would Cohen, and i got to say, Lanny David's... Uh, his handling of his client is curious at best, and a side note here, because he seems to be saying, we won't take a part and we won't do anything. I mean, he almost seems like he's got his own agenda. He wants to take Trump down here. I'm not sure that's in the best interest of Cohen. Be that as it may, though, why would Cohen have taken the plea and basically making Trump an unindicted co-conspirator? He said it clearly. This was campaign finance funds he used to pay off these women. The, 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 there is no restriction for a candidate funding his own campaign. So if you take the theory that Trump gave the money to the campaign, the campaign paid the money, there's no violation of campaign laws for that set of facts. For using the, uh, for misusing a corporate contribution and contributing in excess for not reporting the contribution, uh, Cohen pleaded guilty, and he should have pleaded guilty because he was guilty. I'm not saying Trump is not guilty. I'm simply saying you asked me a lawyer's yeah, question. You haven't and the seen lawyer's question is, yeah. let's wait till we get better evidence. Uh, Dom, the developments today. Um, the developments today, he's the Harvard-educated lawyer. So I Harvard. defer to you. Yeah. He's the Harvard-educated <laughs> lawyer. Didn't get it to you, huh? However, <laughs> counselor, however, yeah. you're wrong. The president is in serious trouble. In serious trouble when you consider, Richard, that the publisher, and I know you're going to get into yeah. all of this, of, of the National Enquirer has taken a deal. We so, weren't so, talking about that. Okay, but wait a minute now, but we have to talk about what happened today. Okay. And so when you, when you, when you put, that's the that's Explain the how it works in the business where someone will get a story just to kill a story. Okay, so, and I'm glad you brought that up, Richard. So what the National Enquirer has apparently been doing to aid and assist their, their buddy Donald Trump is let's say I have a scandal on, on, on you, Bill. And, well, let's say, yeah, and, and, and your buddy Richard owns the National Enquirer. You don't say anything to me. The National Enquirer approaches me, offers me $150,000 for my story, and then says, eh, we're not going to run the story, but we're going to let you write one or two columns. So, in effect, your buddy bought the story from me so that, so that the dirt won't, let me just finish, so that the dirt won't get out there. That's why I answer his question, counselor. So that the dirt won't get out there, and it's a crime. Richard, I am telling you, the only question tonight, with all seriousness, is, is the, will this president finish his term? It's a wrap. It's over. I, I, see, Bill, I've been bitten one too many times. <laughs> Um, I still haven't seen, well, certainly what happened in Virginia is bad for Manafort, but I think he's basically cast his lot, and, and I believe, and you know I'm not conspiracy theorist, I believe he's more worried about cooperating or saying anything with fear of the Russians than he is of anything else, including this president. Right. But nonetheless, he's waiting for a pardon, okay? Um, 
Now, we went into last night with the attorneys. That doesn't immunize the president anyway. He then loses his Fifth Amendment rights here, basically, the, you know, and he can't even avoid a subpoena. He'd have to answer questions if he got one after the fact. All that said, nothing happened yesterday, Tuesday. It was all bad for the president, but nothing for exposure. I think this still comes down to the Mueller probe. And I think we are so conditioned as a public to daily scandals and daily jaw-dropping things that were either said or done that we've, we're so inured to the unseemliness of this, that unless he shows a quid pro quo with the Russians, I don't know that there's a political will in Washington, or even maybe in a lot of this country, to say, it isn't what I expected. You know? I they have I, such lo he's graded on such a curve. I, I, I think there will be, and the question for the Republican Party in the long term is how long it takes them to understand the need to do it. But what and about Eisen? I gave two specific examples, Bill. Senate Intel, Senate Judiciary Committee, to their credit, said, you know what, we, w we have a bill to pass committee, bipartisan, it's going to immunize Mueller, nothing can happen to him. And if any naive person out there thinks the president wouldn't be willing to move on his attorney general and Rodenstein, right, they're kidding themselves. Why shouldn't the Republicans bring that to the floor and have a vote on it? And why shouldn't they also say, with one voice as a party, if there is any, I know Lindsey Graham said, if there is any pardons handed out to people who've been convicted, connected with this probe here, you know, basically to buy silence, we will move as a party for a vote for impeachment. Why not? That's good politics, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I believe it is, and I don't know why some people don't see it that way. Uh, I mean, we all know, like, take it back into Dominic's point as well. We've all known from the beginning that this wasn't going to end up well. This, this is almost an historical necessity, if, if you'll forgive the expression. But it's Donald Trump is not equipped to be president of the United States. He's lived a very sloppy life for a lot of years. You know, he's going down. This was, you know, what happened with Cohen is a small thing. It's the tip of the iceberg on the Mueller investigation. There's so much more coming. Then why hasn't the He's Republican really Party said that? The, it's asinine. I didn't it's ask you asinine. that. Why? What's the because reason? they're afraid of the base. Because they're afraid they will, of the base. They're they afraid of election they, day. They'll, they'll no. have no choice but to have to say something. To Bill's point, the president, I'm telling you guys, this is, it, it is done. Well, Dominic, it's if done. it was done, then 80-something and 90%, Andrew, of the Republican Party would not still be with this president. And that's why, to answer Richard's question, they're still running scared. You know, I thought it was fascinating. When you go back to Lindsey Graham, then, you know, uh, junior senator in South Carolina at the time, during the Clinton impeachment, what he said was a high crime and a misdemeanor. And then when he went back to Nixon and he said, in the end, Nixon cheated. That's what it was. The threshold was that Nixon cheated to win an election. By all definitions, paying hush money to keep news quiet here and everything else is cheating to win an election. Now, campaign funds and so much more that's going to come out of it, but the line just keeps on moving. Do you think it's moving because that was the 1970s or the early 2000s, or is it, is it just because of this present and this time? I think it's partly because of this president in this time. I think it's almost entirely because of the electoral politics we find ourselves in at this point. Republicans right now aren't abandoning Trump because they're afraid for their own careers if they do. Because there's nothing left in the Republican Party except Trump sycophants. So if you're a Republican who decides to challenge Trump, there's every possibility that Trump might campaign against you or insult you or otherwise do whatever he can to try to undermine your campaign. Bill talks about Republicans in Congress banding together and saying maybe this is where we draw the line. But they're afraid of Trump's power. He is much more influential than they are, even in their home districts take, for the most part. Take a look at John Faso in the Hudson Valley. John Faso is a decent man, has been deadly silent, trying to satisfy two un, a completely competitive points of view. He can't do that. Trying to straddle the fence here will, will, will be politically fatal. They're going to have to make a decision sooner or later. That decision could be to back Trump. But... Mm. By God, well, Andrew silence. reported tonight, guys, that apparently GOP leadership has given the green light to embattle Republicans in those purple districts that are going to have tough races. They can go against the president and do it with party blessing. That's big With deal. Trump's blessing, still who have, knows? Still yeah. haven't seen it, though. Yes, we still have not seen it. Okay, coming up next. He said it so many times, you don't even need the sound up to know what he's saying. Fake news, president proclaims, whenever he doesn't like what's being reported. But it's not just Trump. Other Republicans are now saying the same thing. We've got proof. Is this the new normal? Stay with us.